Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. Match between Rockmox and Catalyte on Tomb of Heroes. Once again, Tomb of Heroes. Rockmox in the west side of the map is going to be. Not sure what he's going for, actually. Going for CISO. Well, Catalyte, east side of the map, probably going for CISO as well. Catalyte tends to go for CISO, and yes, indeed, he is, in fact, going for CISO. Though, likely this game, not sure what Rockmox is going to do, but Catalyte is likely to go for a rush. Likely to get a bunch of importers either near his base or in his own base, and go for a massive infantry rush as he's prone to do. Very often does that, while Rockmox, not quite sure what he's planning on doing. Can't think offhand what his style is. It's, as I recall, kind of aggressive, but nowhere near as much as Catalyte's is. Anyway, Catalyte... Yep, he is building, okay, getting a Marine and Special Ops forward while building an RP in his base. Actually, this is pretty normal. Nothing unusual about this so far. Nothing sign nothing that Catalyte norm. well, nothing that's really indicative of what Catalyte tends to do. And Rockmox is, ah, come on. Rockmox is not doing anything yet. We'll see how that goes, but, well, check back in him when he's actually planned something out. Catalyte just moving forward a bit. And not really much to say about this stage of the game. Okay, Rockmox is moving forward. Typical, standard thing. He's building his RP, sending a Special Ops Marine forward. Nothing unusual about this at all. So just speed this up a bit because this is actually kind of a long game. Just to warn you now, this is a bit of a long game. Like, there is a timer in game replays. Though it's off by a factor of two, but it's this is kind of a long game. So let's fast forward to the beginning because there's really not much going on that's that special. Catalyte getting six. Actually, oh wait, no, this is a bit different. Okay, Catalyte getting seven or eight RPs very, very, very early. All in LC, it looks like he is going to be going for his normal tricks. Likely to get up an armory and a bunch of importers up here to the north. And you probably took my advice about this. Is the north side is where you want to do your proxying, or at least that's where it's typically done. So maybe you wouldn't want to do it there. And Rock Mox. No real indication of a strategy at this point. Although he is going for Q Plasma primarily. Guessing Factory will come up and possibly... I don't think Heavy Lancer. That seems unlikely. But Catalyte, he is going for very heavy Liquid Crystal. Back to his point of view, we see... Wow, is that... That's 8 RPs. No, 9 RPs. The 9th one being started. The 10th one just started. Catalyte is just flooding the area in RP. is getting all the Liquid Crystal right off the bat. No armory or importer built up yet, though. Not sure what he's planning on doing with this. I would expect that. Armory, importer, that sort of thing. But no, that's not happening. And Rockmox, however, is pushing forward. Getting a marine out to the southeast. I guess he wants to check for an early natural expansion. There's not going to be one. There never is. So, got to keep an eye on Rockmox. His plan is a little bit odd. Anyway, he... Okay, that apparently was echoed out. Getting an importer instead, getting an armory on top of that. No, getting another importer, what am I saying? That's 5x5. Five five. That's an importer. Armory is 6x6. Six six. I should know this by now. Apparently I cannot count. So Catalyte... He is getting hit pretty heavily by Rockmox. Like I said, has been building nothing but RPs, and RPs cannot fight back. So not much to be said about this. Catalyte's likely to start building some units, get an importer up, or an armory or something. He actually has echoed out his units back to base, so... Looks like Catalyte will have his units in his base when he needs them, though... Maybe not. We do see at... past the red time, or after where the red time has crossed, that Catalyte is up in Rock Mox's space, just, just or in his base, destroying his RPs. Which... Okay, going for factory, so Rock Mox is likely to go for a bit more in the way of the Lancers and ATHCs. No early armies, no, not likely to have early research. More likely to have a lot of early units. And yeah, Catalyte has indeed, to see the blue time have passed by, and Catalyte is actually retreating his forces, not going for proxy. Going for heavy LC, though. Still hasn't changed that up, and Rockmox likely to go for an attack move rather than a regular move this time around with these two units. And it looks like, no, doing that from the south, actually. Going from the south instead to avoid everything that Catalyte has set up. Not a bad idea. And Rockmox... Getting his factory up. Wait for that to be built. There we go. Factory is being built up. What is Rockmox going to do with it? That's what I want to know. I'm guessing ATHC and Lancer. That's what he's going for. No obvious research. And okay, there we go. Importers, armories, and a factory. This is Catalyte as normal. 
There we go, getting two Importer's Armor. Okay, jump. Oh, didn't jump back at all, actually. Rockmox. Rockmox's damage has apparently managed. Oh, it has damaged Catalyte a fair bit, undermined some of his plans. Mostly, apparently, by destroying the Marine in question that was actually executing those plans. So, Catalyte is going to have to deal with this. Get rid of the Special Ops here. Or everything, actually. And there's first ATHC, a second ATHC, and a lot of ATHCs. Rockmox not going for a bunch of factories. I keep saying, get multiple factories. You just build more than one factory. It's more efficient that way. You get two ATHCs at the same time you normally get one. With the resources you have, you can get away with it. Cybernetic Pony is the only player who actually does this. Thank you, Cybernetic Pony, for... Actually, no, never mind. Catalyst's doing this, too. Catalyst and Cybernetic Pony are the only CISO players that seem to actually understand that it's better to have more factories and armories and just production buildings in general. That queuing up units is a bad idea. I realize that there are RTS games, like Zero K, the other game I cast, that have really no reason to build multiple factories except for different types. But that's because of the assist build mechanic, which Akron does not have. Akron is a set build time per unit. Thus, if you have the resources and you're still queuing, that means your bottleneck is in the number of production facilities and you're going to have fewer units than you could otherwise have and thus be at a disadvantage if you don't build multiple production facilities. Most RTS games are actually like this. Akron being one of them. Anyway, Catalyte and Rockmox going up against each other. Rockmox, however... Did manage to get units faster. He still got units sooner, so at the very least he has, even though the growth rate is higher for Catalyte, Catalyte's not actually building any units. Rockmox, however, is, and I've heard arguments about how Chrono Energy does affect multiple factories, and I've mentioned before, macro in the present, but also that may still that may reduce the optimum number of factories. Because there's that, and there's also the idea you don't want to get, leave yourself open undermining, but that doesn't set the optimum factory number to one. It's probably more like three or four. Or at least doesn't necessarily set it to one. At any rate, Macrobab is being built up on top of this, and Catalyte basically still has, has his plans running as normal. And there we go. Now we see the growth rates coming in for Catalyte. Getting two ATHCs as quickly as Rockmox can get one. So, I, although admittedly, Catalyte's also well ahead in resources. For Rockmox, if he can queue, he can build multiple factories. Getting a couple Lancers as well. And, yeah, Catalyte fully defending against this, pushing back everything Rockmox has. A nice comm center, too. Just to rub it in, I suppose. Just to have that much more vision, just to know exactly what's going on. Getting more ATHCs, and those Lancers will not do especially well. They will be able to avoid the Lancers decently, but Lancers do quite well against air. And if they're placed smartly enough, then it won't really matter. And Rock Monks jumping back to the 644 mark. Do see as his attack gets torn apart before his very eyes. Setting up another set of Lancers. Surprisingly, not a whole lot of economy, not a whole lot of production. Rockmox is being extremely aggressive. I thought he was just only a little bit aggressive. But no, he is very aggressive. Catalyte's actually been playing much more economical this game. He's, he's been playing for the long game. Rockmox is trying to end this quickly. And honestly, does not have the units of production capacity to do so. It's seven minutes in the game. And one or two Lancers is not going to beat it. It's not going to do it. Although admittedly, targeting the importers wouldn't be a bad idea. That should probably be the best idea, to kill the importers first. Doesn't look like that's likely to happen, though, and... Rockmox is going to have to contend with the fact that Catalyte does have a better production base. And better economy, even with the Lancers attacking it. Still has a better economy. And more production, and overall is in better condition. Yeah, Catalyte is... Catalyte's likely to, well, he's trying to go for a counterattack. He does need to defend against the Lancers, but once he's done that, a counterattack is going to come in, and then from there... Not sure what Rockmox can really do to defend himself. Getting more Lancers, but like I said, those are kind of weak to ATHCs. Catalyte is getting rid of yet another ATHC with no real effort. Just walk in and kill it. Although, admittedly, his hierarchy leader is just about dead. That's a bit risky. He should probably... I don't know, one frigate patrolling around, or even one ATHC patrolling around, wouldn't be a bad idea to deal with these Lancers. Because at this point, Rockmux is applying a fair amount of soft pressure on Catalyte, mostly because Catalyte seems reluctant to leave his base. Although a couple mechs, that will do the trick as well. Actually, that'll do the trick far better. At least against the Lancers, against other units that might come in, like other ATHCs, not so much, but against Lancers, yes. Yes, it certainly will. Catalyte double-checking that Rockmux is not set up over the northeast side of the map. Good plan, that has happened before. Didn't check the LCRPs, though, so not a full check, but still does keep an eye on that. And getting machinery and ground units simultaneously. Interesting choice, that, but yeah, he's getting both machinery 
and ground units. No Martanks build up quite yet, so I... Not sure where the ground units is coming in yet. Uh, he'll probably get Martanks afterwards and use that. And getting Gatek as well, or just finished Gatek. Never mind, okay, Catalyte's just researched everything. Well, except specials in aerospace, but those are hardly ever researched. Teleporter is up. No Chronoporter quite yet, though. Catalyte... Never mind, Chronoporter to the north. There we are. That's what I'm looking for. We have our Chronoporter and our Teleporter in the main base. While Rockmox, he has expanded over to the north, getting a factory to the north as well. So a little extra protection in case his main base is destroyed. Which is not unlikely at this stage. Catalyte has a much larger army, has Gatek. Rockmox has a smaller army, has just a factory. This is... This is bizarre. Anyway, Catalyte... Gotta say, he does have the army for a Corona Porter. That's some, one important thing to point out. As I mentioned before, that you do kind of need an army in advance of getting a Corona Porter. Catalyte has an army. Army of ATHCs, but at this stage in the game, and given what Rockmox has built, that's just fine. That's absolutely perfect. Catalyte is in a good place right now. He is in very good shape. Rockmox, on the other hand, he does have the expansion to the north, which is useful. He's going to have better long-term economic prospects, being that Catalyte has already mined out two of his LC crates, and the last one is halfway down. Catalyte is being somewhat contained. Like I said, a bit of soft pressure from Rockmox this entire game, keeping Catalyte from really attacking, which Catalyte needs to do. He needs to break out and attack. But no, he's playing the turtle game, and that's a bit of a problem. Rockmox, like I said, has this north base, so a bit more steady economy. Not as strong of an economy, but it's going to last longer. Though, Rockmox not taking advantage of the contain to expand further. Clearly not confident he can, although he has no armies with which to do so. Let's should get one of those. You know, get an army, get a couple more marines. If he loses this marine, he's actually... Well, okay, loses that marine and the mech and the factory, then he's dead. Mechs can build armies for that very reason. Just so you don't lose if you're out of marines. And Catalyte getting attacked from the south. Rockmox has moved in, going for a fairly powerful attack. Catalyte does see this and... How does he respond? I want to know. He has a lot of defensive units in place, but has not yet chosen to respond. This is really strange, and... What the... I just noticed a bunch of dots on the screen. I don't know why. Sorry about that. Very unusual. Anyway, I... Oh, never mind. This is my monitor. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Thought those were the dots. Sorry, I... I should explain. When I was testing the depth of field effect, I put in some dots as an optional debug shader effect just to know where the focal point and the points for checking the aperture, how wide the aperture should be, were placed. And I thought that for some reason those accidentally got on the screen and I hadn't noticed it before. I apologize for that total tangent. Did not mean to get distracted by that. But the game has honestly been really kind of one-sided. I mean, Catalyte can't really be broken in this stage. Rockmox is behind in tech. Catalyte teleporting his RPs over to the north. Okay, Catalyte has the game. Catalyte's game to lose. Though we have seen Catalyte lose in that position before, but I think he's learned his lesson. Heavy tanks on top of this. Okay, Catalyte, just chronoport, uppercut, and win. You can do it. You can win at this stage, easily. With the heavy tanks, the Lancers are nothing. Actually, anything in the air is nothing. Rockmox has no macrofab. He was trying to build one proxy that I actually has been built. I was about to say it. That probably won't work, but it's at least been built. I think Catalyte is not really aware of this, but honestly, he's just building up an army and then likely to go for an uppercut from there. Getting a lot of Q-Plasma. Has exhausted his main base of Q-Plasma. His north... The north center base. The north statue base. That's what he has. That's what he's working with. Building turrets along the entire thing, too, just to make sure, just to be sure that he's not going to be attacked. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. And there we go, teleporting more RPs over to the north side. And I don't think Catalyte is even aware, sorry, Rockmox, I don't think he's even aware that this is happening. So yeah, Catalyte in a wonderful spot, just, you know, needs to win. That's the important thing right now, is that he actually goes and wins. Rockmox has built the proxy macrofab, probably going to get proxy winners. Actually getting more macrofabs in his main base. Rockmox, I guess he was just playing for the long game on ter in terms of production, just figuring he'd have enough harassment to build up the production needs to actually go for a heavy and getting a safer, safer macrofab position. But yeah, I guess he figured he'd just go for the proxy from there and then basically go for proxy Twin Mars. Yeah, just spamming Twin Mars. This is going to be, well, okay, useless without ground units. So Rockmox needs to get an armory to actually get ground units with. Really, where is that armory? You should have had an armory minutes ago. Like, Okay, no, that's an importer. 
That's not an armory. Armory's right here. It's six by six unit, makes inventory. I don't know, I, I guess Rockmox isn't familiar with it. Rather unfortunate that, but hey, a swarm of Mars isn't bad either. However, this stage, Catalyte has just outproduced Rockmox. I mean, Rockmox is getting multiple macro so I'll give him that, but still. Not sure really what he's planning on going for there. Catalyte is basically just going to go for an uppercut from the looks of it. That, the only hard part is the fact that he can't easily uppercut with this many units. But you know, an edge attack would do just... I mean, honestly, teleporting all these heavy tanks into Rock Mox's base, that would win the game. Pretty much anything at this point Catalyte does aggressively will win the game, honestly. And Rock Mox getting Macrofabs... Or sorry, yeah, Macrofabs spawn Macrofabs and Martanks spawn Martanks. Two of his Macrofabs are done and... Two proxy macrofabs as well as two in-base macrofabs. North base has no additional protection, however, and once again, this north statue, northwest base, the north statue base has a lot of turrets, so that is protection. No production though, but still, it's just it's still not getting ground units. I wonder what Rockmox is thinking. He's just going for tons and tons of Mar tanks. Main base hasn't built up yet, but yeah, he's going for all the Mar tanks. Catalyte, on the other hand, getting more heavy tanks. He has eight so far. And these should do just fine against the Mar tanks. Even against Twin Mars, they have enough health, they'd probably do okay. Although air units are always the best bet. And Catalyte could go for that if he wanted to. Though at this point, can he even Chrono back? I don't think he can Chrono Power back all these units. 350? Okay, he can with these five. But on top of that, with these tanks, no, that's not going to happen. That's 560. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Rockmox, just... Okay, why is Catalyte not attacking? I don't understand why Catalyte is not attacking. He's just getting more and more units. Building up more of my heavy tanks. I... I gotta say, I mean, that's good to do. Get more units, but he could just kill. He could go in for the kill. Catalyte can win. Catalyte could win three minutes ago. Catalyte could win five minutes ago, because there's actually two minutes of time between where we were looking now and the unplayable past edge. A minute and a half of time. He could win. That's what's frustrating me. Catalyte... Okay, now he's moving in. What... For what looks like a Corona Port plan. Rockmox, however, has quite a few. Wow, how many? He's got about a dozen Mar tanks. And a couple of frigates as well, just for good measure. Not that it's gonna matter too much, but yeah, a couple of frigates as well as the Mar tanks. And Catalyte about to Corona Port these heavy tanks. Or I think so. Yes, he is. He's getting them into the Corona Porter range. We'll be Corona Porting those. However, Rockmox moving into the Mar tanks, trying to go in for the destruction of Catalyte's entire base, and that's actually gonna be. Wow. Really? That is... That is surprising. Really good timing, gotta say. I mean, Catalyte can obviously Chronoport back these heavy tanks and save the base, and it's not gonna matter, but... That is good timing on those Mar tanks, right as the heavy tanks move out of the base. And... Ah, I see. Catalyte going for a Permaclone, killing off the Corona Porter right as he gets in there. Basic Grandfather Paradox Permaclone, but... Oh, it's simple. Simple thing. Will work. Or should work, depending on the timing. Looks like it will, though. Kind of depends on when... Oh, well, that rival falls off, and it looks like... Rockmox appears to be trying to actually propagate that. Though it's not going to work. It's not going to propagate faster than the time wave, and... Permaclone is... Is it confirmed? Yes, Permaclone is... Con oh! Yes, it is confirmed. That got off the timeline. Permaclone for Catalyte. He has the heavy tanks. Moving a bunch of them into the base. It's going to slow down. Good at normal speed now. But yeah, Catalyte moving into the heavy tanks, getting straight into the main base, and we'll be tearing apart these Mar tanks with some issue. Not a whole lot of issue, but still some issue. The frigates are no threat, however. The heavy tanks will just rip them apart before they know it. They will go down, the rest of the base is going to go down as well. And Catalyte moving in with the heavy tanks on top of that. A nice permaclone there. That was, like I said, simple permaclone, well timed, and it worked. And it's also probably going to get nerfed in the next patch because, honestly, it's not supposed to happen. But yeah, it really comes down... I was talking to Cybernetic Pony about this because he pointed me to this game. And the trick is basically timing it out. Actually, is he even timing... I don't think he's even timing it out. Because the thing is, you have 170 seconds of chronoport time and 50 seconds between each time wave hitting. And I think it just came down to... Basically, you do the kill for when the time wave just leaves. It's supposed to be prevented, but it's... Hmm, I'm trying to think about that. 
No, never mind. I can't remember the exact principle offhand. I apologize. There is a specific principle to it, though, that is actually inherent to the way that Chrono Pointing works and the way that the Unplayable Pass time works. Uh, some... Ah, I can't remember offhand. Anyway, Catalyte and Rockmog is both destroying each other's base at the same time, but Catalyte has a much safer economy, much more sturdy economy. Just needs to move north a bit. Although another Chrono Pointer being built up just to further the Permaclone. And Tornaz as well for good measure, because why not? But yeah, it was... It was really basic timing thing. I think it just had to do... Oh, I remember what it was. It's, it is inherent to the way that the Chrono Porter works. It's actually really simple. You do the Chrono Port attack, and then you simply jump away before the arrival happens. So the Chrono Port arrival ends up on the next propagated time wave, and because of the fact that the next time wave after that is going to happen 50 seconds later, and the arrival is less than 50 seconds away from the left edge of the timeline, it will always fall off the timeline. Always, always, always. Provided you jump away from the Chrono Port when it happens, and you have an uppercutted attack order on the Chrono Porter itself by the Chrono Porter units. They will end up destroying the Chrono Porter. Like, they'll Chrono Port back. We'll see it soon as well. Basically, they Chrono Port back from near the edge. It hits the end some point in the past, but it doesn't matter. It hasn't propagated yet. They jump away from the propagation, so they don't, or at least they don't follow the units back in time. But jump away from the propagation is even better, but that's not quite so safe. Anyway, they don't follow the units. The units end up getting hit in the next time wave, which is somewhere less than 50 seconds away from here. And then the following time wave, the second time wave across that point, is going to come after the point in time has fallen off the timeline entirely, thus making it permanent. And then after that, it all works. But yeah, so as long as as long as the Chronoport arrival happens, basically not observed by the player, then it won't end up happening off the timeline, and this units end up just destroying themselves, like annihilating themselves utterly. Which can happen. They have to be careful about that sometimes. Especially when you're trying to play with paradoxes. But yeah, with that level of control, basically it works. See, so yeah, I think if... I'm not sure you'd really fix that offhand, honestly. I suppose having arrivals be a self-propagating thing, like, as soon as the arrival happens, is just... When it acronally happens, is automatically stuck onto the timeline. That would probably eliminate all the paradoxes, although admittedly that would also screw up a lot of stuff. I mean, if you if that happens, destroying the departure would end up annihilating the arrival as well. So it's a bit tricky. But anyway, Catalyte looks like he's about to go for another Permaclone, and Rockmox has pretty much lost his base. He does have another couple Importers and Macrofabs over to the south, but he doesn't have much savings to work with. And eight Martanks. And a couple Frigates. That's about it. Well, Catalyte has... Okay, never mind. He has some economy. I forgot about that. Rockmox is at the northwest base. Catalyte has not attacked in the north yet. Surprising that, but he hasn't. And an importer could be built. I mean, an armory, I should say, could be built for more marines, for more RPs. And also, Catalyte has lost his original main base. The statue base is definitely his main at this stage. There's no question about that. And he's getting some backup production. So Catalyte getting backup production here. He's getting backup armory, getting backup macrofab. Everything's backup. Everything's good for him. But for Catalyte, not so much. Catalyte does not have any way of getting additional RPs. And he's losing his Martanks to units that are... Basically not going to matter so much. I mean, Catalyze going to chronoport these back. He's going to permaclone them. And then from there, it's no big deal. He's going to have that many more units. As long as he has this chronoporter up, it's fine. And even if he doesn't have the chronoporter up, he has enough money. Look at all the cash he has. 1,000 LC, 2,700 QP. This is on his side, and Rockmox has just disconnected. So that is game. Actually, that's shorter than I expected. Yeah, I don't think anything really happens ap would happen at this point. Yeah, Rockmox DC'd. Apparently Catalyte didn't notice, but... Yeah, that that is game, so... Rather unfortunate. <laughs> and I guess Catalyte just wants to kill off Rockmox, because why not? He's won, but yeah. And now destroying the proxy base. So Catalyte, well, rather the proxy base, getting rid of that. That'll be gone soon enough. And it looks like Catalyte accidentally chronofragged himself when he chronoported that last time. But he does get rid of Rockmox's base over to the southeast. And will likely get rid of it over to the north as well. Thus eliminating all of Catalyte's forces and... Sorry, all of Rockmox's forces and winning the game. But that's all that can really be said about that. And that is basically the game. That really did end sooner than I expected. But yeah, so really simple chronoport technique. Unfortunately, we didn't see it a second time. I kind of hoped we would. 
but we did not. Yeah, it's quite simple to do, and it's pretty much inherent to the way it happens. As long as you don't follow the Chronoport, and you have the units attack the Chronoporter, it's basically going to work. Like, provably going to work. Every time. I don't know what can be really done about that offhand. But yeah. Honestly, this could happen for Vekir as well. Vekir can do this. Grekim can't. Ironically enough, once again, the masses of chronoporting are not the strongest of chronoporting. It used to be Vekir was stronger because of the way they could jump around more easily between chronoporting and teleporting. But yeah, Grekim is the only species that cannot do this trivial chronoport technique. Or sorry, permaclone technique. So that is game. And that is going to... Well, I, don't, I think it's going to be for me tonight. That's all I had planned. I don't think there are really any other games that were of a reasonable length... Yeah, all of them were pretty long. Let's see. Yeah, they're all pretty long. Okay, well, that is going to be it for me tonight. So, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.